My client was a longtime and diehard New York Mets fan. What's the name of that former Met who hasn't played in 20 years, but through his deferred contract, he gets paid every July 1st? There's like a name. He now has a special day named after him that they celebrate every year. Oh, Bobby Bonilla, he yelped. Bonilla. Not Vanilla. Bobby Bonilla. Exactly, I said. Padilla rhymes with Bonilla. My client now sat back in his chair. Now it was his turn for bewilderment. Put that coffee down. Creators are leaders. Be careful what kind of leaders you're producing here. Helen, we're both in sales. Let me tell you why I suck as a salesman. They realized that to be in power, you didn't need guns or money or even numbers. You just needed the will to do what the other guy wouldn't. I'm not leaving. The show goes on. Well, hello there, friends. Welcome back to the Construction Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Bradley Hartman. Over the last few months, I've had several client engagements that have taken me to California and to the Pacific Northwest, to the Midwest, and to the Northeast. And during these trips, I've had variations of the same frustration, which I think is an opportunity. And I wanted to address it here. So the title of this episode is In the War for Talent, Leaders Cannot Make This Mistake failing to get people's names right. Brett Favre may be the simplest example. The NFL also had Junior Seau. The NBA currently has Giannis Antetokounmpo and now Victor Wenbanyama. Major League Baseball has Shohei Otani and Xander Bogarts. Now, I've got a low hockey IQ, but Mark Messier and Jonathan Taves come to mind in the NHL. And it's not just men, obviously. The ladies include Nadia Komenichi and Martina Navratilova. What all these athletes have in common is phonetically challenging names. And yet, fans of these sports learned how to pronounce these names perfectly. Why? Because the fans cared. They didn't want to sound dumb. Maybe they even wanted to show some respect. Regardless, fans learned how to say these names correctly, and they learned to teach others. These athletes are proof we can pronounce names correctly if we want to, if we care enough. And Dale Carnegie was right when he said, remember that a person's name is, to that person, the sweetest and most important sound in any language. And yes, this includes the linebacker for the Chicago Bears in the Hall of Fame, Dick Butkus. So it was with bewilderment and disappointment that I finally confronted my client. He was and is caring. He doesn't want to sound dumb. And he does want to show some respect. My client had recently hired this quote-unquote superstar named George. George was young, socially intelligent, a quick learner, ambitious, likable, incredibly hardworking, passionate about the construction industry, and bilingual. My client wouldn't stop raving about this kid. George did this, and George did that. And George, he's the future of our company and our industry. My client was a raving fan of George. But it wasn't until we were reviewing the organizational chart together that my bewilderment and my disappointment blossomed. So where's George on this chart, I asked. I don't see him. Right there, my client said as he pointed. Where? I don't see a George. My client was pointing. Second column from the left, three down. Padilla, my client said, like it rhymed with vanilla. George. I slowly closed my eyes, and my chin fell to my chest. Time for some tough love, I thought. Man, you are constantly talking about how you're in a war for talent, and how you landed this unicorn named George. I was doing a poor job of controlling the intensity in my voice. And yet, you haven't even taken the time to learn how to say his name correctly. I wasn't yelling, but I was certainly exclaiming. What do you mean? My client was caught off guard by my frustration. His name, it's Jorge 
Padilla. Jorge Padilla. Now, shame is a powerful emotion, so I attempted to inject humor to balance this reprimand. His last name doesn't rhyme with vanilla or gorilla or the thrilla in Manila. My client, I could see, just felt embarrassed. He just stared at me. And you already know this too, I began. My client was a longtime and diehard New York Mets fan. What's the name of that former Met who hasn't played in 20 years, but through his deferred contract, he gets paid every July 1st? There's like a name. He now has a special day named after him that they celebrate every year. Oh, Bobby Bonilla, he yelped. Bonilla. Not vanilla. Bobby Bonilla. Exactly, I said. Padilla rhymes with Bonilla. My client now sat back in his chair. Now it was his turn for bewilderment. No shit, he uttered. Huh. I guess that's like a Pancho Villa too then, huh? If you care about the people you work with, you should learn how to pronounce their names. We do this all the time with people we work for. The people above us on the organizational chart always receive extra attention and focus. But we often fail to do the same with the people that work for us. The fact that Jorge Padilla never corrected his boss's boss's boss, the guy whose name is literally on the building, it's not surprising. Some combination of respect, fear, and the survival instinct resulted in Jorge Padilla thinking, happens all the time. Call me anything you want, as long as you call me employed. Yes, this ignorance happens quite frequently within businesses, but it also happens within families. In a classic clip from the HBO show Succession, Cousin Greg is getting reacquainted with his Uncle Logan, the powerful media mogul, and his cousins as he tries to weasel into the family business. This is uh, Craig, by the way. Cousin Craig. Craig. It's it's Greg. No? no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg. Um, people sometimes like mistakenly call me Craig, too. So I'll, I'll answer to both. If you or people you know struggle with pronouncing Hispanic names, we are here to help. Now, you're on your own with the Greg versus Craig conundrum. The good news is you don't have to learn a dozen rules and thousands of first and last names. The 80-20 principle and its visualization as a power curve will efficiently guide us to the vital few first and last names that will most likely cause you problems. As for the bad news, there is no bad news. You will differentiate yourself, you will build trust faster, you will show you care. So let's start with the two rules of pronunciation. The first one is called the La Jolla rule of pronunciation. The second is called the Burrito rule of pronunciation. The La Jolla rule, named after the coastal San Diego area, contains two insights. The J in Spanish always makes the H sound. And when two L's are placed together, it produces the Y sound. So if you have been pronouncing La Jolla, California, as La Jala, well, that explains why people always look confused when you say it and why that girl from San Diego State University never called you back after spring break, 1999. Four of the top 10 and eight of the top 50 most popular Hispanic names have a J in the name. All should make the H sound when you say them. Now, if you are only listening to this as an audio, you will not be able to see that we have charts and graphs, several of them to make this really easy to learn and understand that we are making available on our blog at bradleyhartmanandco.com slash blog or as a PDF download at bradleyhartmanandco.com slash tools. And you can just type in the password Hartman. So if you want to get this down and you realize this would actually be very helpful for you or someone you know and your organization to pronounce these names correctly of your future superstars, you can go there to download these directly. So back to the show. So again, four of the top 10 and eight of the top 50 most popular Hispanic names have a J in the name. Number one is Jose and the Anglo equivalent is Joseph. And that is 19% of the top 50 most popular names is Jose. Number two is Juan. Anglo equivalent is John. That's at eight and a half percent of the top 50. Number five is Jesus, which would be Jesus. 
And that is 3.7% of the top 50. Number six is our friend Jorge. For George is the Anglo equivalent, and that's 3.3% of the top 50. Number 14 is Alejandro. Anglo equivalent is Alexander. Number 19 is Javier. The Anglo equivalent is Xavier with an X. Number 30 is Julio, whose Anglo equivalent is Julius. And then number 42 is Jaime. Now, the Anglo equivalent for Jaime could be one of three names. It could be Jamie, James, or Jacob. As for the ladies, the J is less prominent, with only one in the top 10 and four in the top 50, representing an aggregate of only 6% of the top 50. Number four is Juana. The Anglo equivalent would be Jana. That's 3%. Number 20 is Josefina, which would be Josephine. Number 28, Alejandra, which would be Alexandra. And number 50, which would be Julia, which is exactly the same, Julia. The second insight in the La Jolla rule of pronunciation is that when you see two L's together, it makes the Y sound. You already know this with a pair of culinary essentials, the quesadilla and pollo. The humor in Napoleon Dynamite comes from its mispronunciation. Well, what's there to eat? Knock it off, Napoleon. Make yourself a dang quesadilla. Fine. Meanwhile, the drug cartel money laundering in Breaking Bad comes from its fried chicken restaurant chain. Hello, and welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. My name is Gustavo, but you can call me Gus. I am thrilled that you'll be joining our team. Each and every day, we serve our customers exceptional food with impeccable service. We take pride in everything that we do. And after this 10-week online seminar, I am confident that you'll fit right in. Of the top 100 most popular Hispanic last names, the La Jolla rule of pronunciation will help you enunciate seven of them, including Padilla. Number 26 is Castillo, C-A-S-T-I-L-L-O. Number 27 is Jimenez. Number 65 is Padilla, like our friend Jorge Padilla. Number 67 is Mejia, with a J in the middle, M-E-J-I-A. Number 69 is Juarez. Number 78, this has a double R and a double L. It's Carrillo, Carrillo, C-A-R-R-I-L-L-O. So it's got both there. And number 98 is Trujillo, Trujillo. So it's got both of them, the La Jolla rule of pronunciation, T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O, Trujillo. The surname Villa, V-I-L-L-A, as in Pancho, ranked number 137, and Bonilla, as in Bobby, ranked number 140. Up next is the burrito rule of pronunciation. It simply states that the I in Spanish is pronounced E. So the I makes an E sound in Spanish. Actually, that sounds confusing, you might say. And it is. I just want you to think about going to Taco Bell. All right, how are you going to go there? Let's say you're going to go there in your Ford Fiesta, right? Fee, F-I, Fiesta, right there, Fiesta, which, of course, if you've ever seen the Ford Fiesta, that is quite a little party on four wheels, right? That I is making the long E sound, right? And then that E next to it makes the A sound, like Las Vegas. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The point is, you're already saying Fiesta right. Why? Because of the burrito rule of pronunciation, that I makes the long E sound. So you're driving in your Ford Fiesta, and what do you order? You're going to order a quesadilla, right? We covered this. Nobody calls it really a quesadilla unless you're making fun of it, all right? So that I at the end of it, quesadilla, quesadilla. Why? Because that I makes the E sound. You're also going to order a cheesy gordita crunch. Does anybody call it the gordita? No. Why? Because they intuitively know that I makes the E sound, gordita. And what are you going to put on your cheesy gordita crunch? That's right. The Taco Bell Diablo sauce, right? D-I-A-B-L-O means the devil. Diablo. So it's D, D, that's how it sounds. Diablo. Why? Because that I makes the long E sound, right? C. And you know that as well, right? You know how to say yes in Spanish. It's S-I. You don't say C, do you? No, you say C. Why? Because the I makes the long E sound. So there it is. Three insights from two rules of pronunciation. La Jolla, 
The J makes the H sound and the double L makes the Y sound. The burrito rule of pronunciation, the I in Spanish makes the E sound. And since we're on the subject of names, just think about the common Anglo-American nicknames we throw around all the time. Richard is a dick. William is a Bill. John is a Jack. Margaret is a Peggy. Why? Charles is a Chuck. Henry becomes a Hank. Elizabeth can be Betty. A Theodore can be Ted. This is just a name a few. A small study guide would be helpful, right? Well, I formally studied the Spanish language for eight years in classrooms in the United States and Mexico. And never once did someone say, uh, hey man, here's a hot tip for you. Because of the immense popularity of a handful of Christianity-based names like Jose, Joseph, Jesus, Jesus, and Francisco, Francis, there are a handful of key nicknames used to distinguish between members of the same family that share the same name. So we'll rectify that for you now. Here's the most common Spanish nicknames you'll hear on the job. So in order of the popularity of the given name, I'm going to start off with the nickname. So Pepe, if you ever heard Pepe, that comes from Jose. Chewy comes from Jesus. Paco or Pancho, either one of those, Paco or Pancho, come from Francisco. Tonio, T-O-N with a little squiggly line over the top. Tonio, as you will hear, is kind of a shortened version of Antonio. Beto. B-E-T-O, Beto, comes from Roberto or Alberto. So Roberto, Alberto, either one is Beto. Lalo, inevitably, if you have enough Spanish speakers on the job together, one of them is going to be called Lalo. Lalo comes from Eduardo. Kike, Q-U-I, Q-U-E, kind of tough to say. Kike, I don't hear this too much, but I have absolutely met folks on the job site who are referred to by this. That comes from Enrique. Kike from Enrique. Memo comes from Guillermo, and Guillermo is the Spanish name for William. So Memo comes from Guillermo. Fonsi comes from Alfonso. You can hear that in there. Neto comes from Ernesto. And Nacho, as in Nacho Libre, comes from Ignacio. Now, again, if you are listening to this as a podcast only and you do not have the download or have reviewed the blog, I realize these long lists might be tough to remember. So again, you can go to bradleyhartmanandco.com slash blog to get that or go to bradleyhartmanandco.com slash tools, enter in Hartman is the password, and you can download the PDF so you can read this and share it. To tie these phonetic insights together, the La Jolla rule of pronunciation, the burrito rule of pronunciation, and Spanish names, you can practice it with nine of the top cities in the United States. Number two, Los Angeles. That's right. Los Angeles. What does it mean? It means the angels. They call Los Angeles the city of angels. I didn't find it to be that exactly. But I'll allow there are some nice folks there. Of course, I can't say I've seen London. And I've never been to France. And I ain't never seen no queen in her damn dundies, as the fella says. But I'll tell you what. After seeing Los Angeles, and this is here story I'm about to unfold, well, uh, I guess I've seen something every bit as stupefying as you'd see in any of those other places. Number seven, San Antonio means St. Anthony. Number eight is San Diego, which means St. James. I love this city. It's a, it's a fact. It's the greatest city in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> Discovered by the Germans in 1904, they named it San Diego, which of course in German means a whale's No, there's no way that's correct. Number 10 is San Jose, St. Joseph. 17 is San Francisco, which means St. Francis. And yes, it is fun to say Francisco. Francisco? Francisco, that's fun to say. Francisco. 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 Buddy. Am I too loud? Just just a little. Sorry. 
Number 22, El Paso in Texas means the pass or the step, like in a stair. Number 24 is Las Vegas, Nevada, and it means the meadows. Now, when you think of Las Vegas, I need you to think less of the real deserty part of the state in the south and think more of what it's like in the north where there's lots of lush fields and things like that. So Las Vegas means the meadows. Number 35, Sacramento, which means, yes, sacrament. And 36, Mesa, Arizona, it means table. In the war for talent, the one mistake leaders cannot make is not caring enough to get people's names right. Don't be afraid of saying, can you repeat that for me? I just want to make sure I get this right. If you can master Giannis Antetokounmpo, Victor Wenbanyama, Jonathan Taves, or Brett, I always struggle with this because the V is in front of the R. I don't get it. What about Brett Fogg? Bruh. Five. F- Farv. Brett Farv. It's easier if you actually don't just look at it. So... If you can get these right, you can pronounce the names right of the superstars on your team. And again, if you're listening to this as a podcast only, audio only, and you believe you would benefit from seeing this in writing along with the several charts and graphs to make the insights obvious and to see all the phonetics written out, which is what I have to do. I'm a very visual learner. Again, you can go to bradleyhartmanandco.com slash blog or go to bradleyhartmanandco.com slash tools to download the PDF. You're going to need the password Hartman, all lowercase, H-E-R-T-M-A-N-N. All of this is free. I want to make this easy for you to get right. And again, to get these delivered to your email inbox, you should absolutely sign up for our monthly newsletter, the Construction Leadership Newsletter, where we deliver as much value as we can once per month, just once per month, to help you become a better leader in the construction industry. If you found this valuable and you believe that you should share it with a friend or a colleague or a parent, go ahead and do that. And if you got value from this episode, do me a small favor, rate and review us on whatever podcast player you are listening to. Those mean more to us than you know, as we try to grow our audience and bring us all closer together. So that's all we've got. Thank you for listening. We're going to close out with our leadership mantra. You, my friend, are owed nothing. Deliver value first, make it a great year.